Hi, my name is Ruben Crossman, and today we're going to be making some kombucha. As you can see, we have all the necessaries here. We have our scoby, which is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. We've got our black tea. You could also use a green tea. A cheesecloth, rubber band, boiling water, and a fermenting jar. With, I actually put a um, little aquarium temperature guide, because you want to keep your kombucha around 70 degrees. That's kind of the most optimal temperature. So, and this also lets you know when it's safe to add your um, SCOBY to your uh, tea mix because you don't want to add your SCOBY in hot water, it will kill it and uh, all that good stuff. So as you can see our water is boiling. I'm going to go ahead and add my six tea bags of black tea and we're going to let that steep for approximately 20 minutes or whatever, you know. Um, I have also only making about half the water needed, so it's about 60 ounces of boiling water. And the reason I'm doing that is because I like to uh, add cooler water so I can bring the temperature down quicker. That way we can add the scoby um, a lot quicker. Otherwise you can, you know, steep your tea and let it cool overnight before you add your scoby. You can kind of just experiment what works better with your time schedule and all that good stuff. So, here we go. We're going to add our six teas here. And we're going to give that 20 minutes or so to steep. And then we'll come back and... Uh, Add the cold water, sugar, and the culture. And then we're going to give that a few days to ferment. Let me go ahead and cover that. All right, so we're going to give that 20 minutes. So now that we've had our tea sit for approximately 20 minutes or so, we've got a nice brew going. We're going to go ahead and pull out our tea bags. Kind of, I like to kind of just squeeze out what I can. It's a little hot, but deal with it sometimes. And um, I should mention before that it's very important to be very sanitary on this process because it's a very delicate um, system where if there's bad bacteria in there you can get some negative results in your culture and have a bad batch. So you always want to wash your hands. Everything you use you want to make sure it's washed. Like pre-rinse this. Even if it's washed before you use it go ahead and pre-rinse it again to make sure there's nothing that's happening if you haven't used it for a few days. Um, you know your pan that you're using to brew your tea. Anything that's going to make contact with your culture, just make sure you're uh, washed and sanitized. Alright, so we've got our tea here. I'm going to go ahead and pour this into our jar. So like I said, I made a, uh, a pretty condensed tea. That way I can add um, water and ice cubes to bring the temperature between 70 and 90. So now I've got some just cold spring water. While that's warm, you're going to want to add one cup of sugar. And that's what the uh, bacteria and yeast are going to feed off of to create the fermentation process. So that was one cup of sugar to one gallon of kombucha tea. And you use a wood spoon to kind of get that all dissolved and mixed in there. And now after you've kind of stirred and kind of dissolved all your sugar, we're going to go ahead and add a few ice cubes to bring the uh, temperature down below 90. Alright. We're going to start with like five or six ice cubes. Alright, now that our uh, Ice cubes have melted. We've reached a temperature of approximately 80 degrees or so. Now we're going to add about 10 to 15 percent liquid, which is 15 um, ounces of the previous tea for our starter, and this helps bring the pH down to a more acidic level to help um, inoculate the uh, fermentation process. And on top of that, we'll be adding our SCOBY. So I'm going to add all of this liquid, which is approximately 15, 16 ounces along with the SCOBY, and just put that in there. All right. Now one other process you're going to want to be aware of is when you go to uh, harvest or use your kombucha, this is going to take, you know, once again, depending on temperature, anywhere between five, seven, eight days. And once it's ready, once again, you're going to have you make sure your hands are washed and anything you're using that's going to come in contact is going to be sanitized. Um, once it's done, you can taste it, you know, after a few days, just start tasting it, and when it gets to that 
taste that you really enjoy, go ahead, pull your mother SCOBY out, along with there will be a baby on there also, you can pull that out, put that in your jar again and add, you know, 15-16 ounces of your tea. There, that way you have another inoculation for your next batch. And go ahead and store that with an airtight container. And also it's important um, to not use metals or any types of uh, coppers or anything that can contaminate. Um, wood, glass, ceramics are the best things to use to, to have contact with your kombucha. Um, like I say, you just kind of watch it, start experimenting, tasting it after a few days. Once you start to see bubbles come up, you know, enjoy um, just kind of living with it and uh, working with it and playing with it and tasting it and all that good stuff. And um, the last thing to, to do is after we've got our SCOBY in there and our uh, starter, Go ahead and cover that with a cheesecloth. Um, this is really important because you don't want any outside contaminants getting in, like flies, um, dusts, things like that, because you want to protect it, but you also want it to breathe. So you're letting airflow go through, but you're also keeping contamination from the environment getting inside to create a problem. Um, you usually will notice if something happened. Um, your culture will um, change colors, get dark. There will be like weird-looking stuff going on. And uh, you just want to be safe, you know, so make sure you're as clean and contaminant-free as possible. And uh, enjoy. All right, in a week or so, we're going to be able to enjoy these wonderful benefits of this cultured tea. Over the last century or so, we've kind of lost our contact or our use of these cultured foods because of refrigeration and processing of foods. There's other great um, cultured foods such as sauerkrauts, kefirs, misos, tempehs that we can use in our daily diet which will help us with our beneficial bacteria and keep things in balance and also keep the bad bacteria at bay.